The Whipping Tree. The Seminole Nation Whipping Tree still stands in front of the modern Seminole County Courthouse. In the days following the Civil War, Wewoka was chosen the capital of the Seminole Nation, and a large pecan tree stood behind the Seminole Council House. There wasn't a jail at the Seminole Council House because the tribal police, known as the Seminole Light Horsemen, took very few, custom, very few prisoners. The Light Horsemen were selected by the Tribal Council for their fearlessness and honesty. They searched out the criminals and brought them to the Council House for their cases to be heard by the Council. There was only two options available for a guilty verdict, the Whipping Tree or the Execution Tree. From the earliest days of the United States, the Black Seminoles were a pressing concern for Southern Americans who wanted to recover the fugitives and who viewed a free, armed colony of Blacks on the frontier as a dangerous menace. The Blacks were all more formidable because of their neighbors, 4,000 Seminole Indians with whom they forged a pragmatic military alliance. The pressure from American slaveholders ultimately forced two wars with the Seminole allies, including the largest and most costly Indian war in American history, the Second Seminole War, 1835 to 1842, which historians have long recognized as a joint Indian Black uprising. In 1838, the vanguard of black warriors in the Second Seminole War accepted a promise of freedom from the U.S. in exchange for surrendering and agreeing to move to the new Indian Territory in Oklahoma. By 1842, more than, four, <clears throat> more than 500 black rebels had immigrated. The war in Florida persisted four more years, but not one major engagement took place after the blacks stopped fighting. The Oklahoma period of the Black Seminole Odyssey, 1838 to 1849, proved torturous for the Maroons as Southern politicians and Western slaveholders, whites and Indians alike, conspired to re-enslave them. Surprisingly, the Blacks found their closest ally among the U.S. Army officers, including men whom they had recently fought in Florida, like General Zachary Taylor, and Thomas Sidney Jessup. The officers tried to intervene on behalf of the Black Seminole, but sectional politics in Washington ultimately led to their downfall. <sighs> Seminole women harvested crops of corn, beets and squash. Seminole men did most of the hunting and fishing, catching games such as deer, wild turkey, rabbits, and turtles. Of all the five civilized tribes, the Seminoles' transition to life in the West was the most arduous. The riding of ragtag groups essentially captured as prisoners during the Second Seminole War 1835 to 1842, the Seminoles came late to the Indian Territory and found themselves in a strange new world. The introduction of hand crank sewing machines around 1900 revolutionized Seminole clothing design and prompted women to begin experimenting with strips of colorful cotton fabric purchased at local trading posts. Working in the remote camps of the Everglades by about 1916, Seminoles and Muscogee women had developed new and distinctive styles of clothing known as Tawikacha our patchwork. Uh, 
After being sworn in as principal chief of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma on August 16, 1922, Alice, center first row, poses with five daughters and three granddaughters on the steps of the U.S. Courthouse of Muskogee. 